science fiction film The Creator is a mashup of prior stories across the genre spectrum. Perhaps most overtly, it's like a cross between Elysium and Chappie, but has a great many influences beyond just this. The film's impressive for various reasons. On a technical level, it's an astounding achievement of economical and innovative filmmaking, bringing amazing, almost flawless visual effects to the screen for a much lower cost than normal. However, despite its virtues, the film is also frustrating for reasons related to the actual story it tells, the grand ideas it inadequately tackles, and the way it handles character. The creator alludes to a lot of big questions about things such as war, consciousness, and what makes us human, so let's delve into the way that subject matter is tackled in this sci-fi piece. To a large extent, the creator is a war film. There are overt parallels with certain real-world conflicts. For example, the film is steeped in the Vietnam War aesthetic, largely taking place in that part of the world, and the fictional New Asia more broadly, where the US is waging its assault on AI. The robots are a smaller group fighting against a global superpower with superior military technology. There are also parallels with the Iraq War. The war on AI is launched as a result of a devastating terror attack on Los Angeles. This attack constituted AI detonating a nuclear bomb in the city. As a response, America outlawed all AI, or at least the majority of it, because it seems they still use basic forms of AI in their military endeavours. They also launched a war to rid the world of AI completely, going into New Asia to destroy all of it present there. The US-led war against Iraq came in response to the 9-11 terror attacks on New York City and Washington DC. However, this war targeted the wrong country because Iraq was not responsible for those terror attacks and was not in possession of weapons of mass destruction, as the US claimed to suspect it was. You could liken the US attacks on New Asia to the invasions of Iraq and Vietnam in that the AI in New Asia did not attack America. The attack came from another source. However, in the film, there may still be good reason for America to want to shut down all remaining AI in the world, because their own AI AI did not start out as their enemy. It eventually turned on them with a devastating surprise attack. America may therefore be justified in assuming that will happen again with the remaining AI in the world. This is an interesting web of ideas and dilemmas to consider, but the film never goes into them very deeply. It doesn't expand on them at all after they're set up. We're shown why the war is unpleasant and why we should be against it, because the robots being attacked are clearly sentient and act just like humans, forming loving bonds with humans, but presumably that was all the case in America too, before AI turned against mankind. Or was it just a small AI sect that did that, vilifying the entirety of the AI population unjustly? Probably, but none of these questions are answered. The film implies we should be against the war for compassionate reasons without giving sufficient context as to the history of it and what the Americans are scared the remaining robots are going to turn into. I thought there might end up being some kind of revelatory nuance to the AI nuking LA, some complicated societal build-up to that event, which may have given insight into the perspective of the AI which did it, but there wasn't. Were tensions rising over time between humanity and AI in America before that event? Did AI attack America with the nuke because they were provoked or afraid of persecution? Were the AI framed as a way to justify shutting them down by prejudicial actors? We don't know, but it's never implied that any of that is the case. The only information we're given is that the AI detonated a nuke in LA and the Americans retaliated. So it seems like there's good justification for the war, not only for America to protect their own people, but also to stop AI from detonating more nukes around the world. The fact that there was no explanation, no debate around this dilemma, 
and the history of horror between the humans and AI is a missed opportunity. Of course, there's an equivalence drawn between AI and human violence, as well as AI and human suffering, compassion, love, etc. And the Vietnam War aesthetic evokes the history of humans launching attacks on people who did not strike first. Just because some AI in America turned on humanity doesn't mean all AI would, but it's understandable why America would not want to take that risk. So that's where a lot of the nuance lies, but it's just not really expanded on enough. Moving on, the characters were maybe a tad underdeveloped in certain ways. Not massively, but a tad. The portrayal of the relationship building between main character Joshua and robot child Alfie was a bit unfocused. As a result, the kind of relationship they ended up with, where they're very attached to each other, I didn't find to be as convincing as it should have been. Maya is supposed to be a big influence on the story, and her ostensible death informs Joshua's state of mind throughout. He's broken about it, but I don't think the film does a very effective job at making you feel much for their relationship, at least not for me, because we're only shown a brief glimpse of it and it's all a bit empty and cliched. A good example of how to pull off this same story beat effectively is the start of The Last of Us with the death of Sarah. That game does a very good job of establishing an authentic connection between her and Joel, and so it hits hard when she dies, providing suitable context for one to fully understand and buy into Joel's jaded perspective years later when the rest of the game takes place. The story of the creator is actually quite similar in general to The Last of Us, and comparing these two, comparing how the relationship was built between Joel and Ellie versus how it was built between Joshua and Alfie, helps show the deficiencies in the character and relationship building of the creator. Because the plot was so lean, I don't feel like we really get enough quiet moments with the characters, particularly the main character, to build an emotional connection to them and to give a deeper insight into their psychology. All the right information and story beats are there for one to easily infer what Joshua's motivations and struggles are, but only the bare minimum. I feel more was needed. All these issues are exacerbated by the fact that we knew so little about Joshua's relationship with his wife Maya, knew so little about her as a person, and knew a minimal amount about the dynamic between this couple during Joshua's undercover mission, how that may have psychologically affected him how conflicted he would have felt during that time, and how guilty he would have felt after Maya found out and ostensibly died as a result of the mission he was part of. To reiterate, some of this stuff is included, I just don't really feel the weight of it, because it's shot past in such a fast-paced, paint-by-numbers way. A lot of what makes it feel that way is also the fact that the story beats and character arcs were all very recognisable from those of characters in many other films with similar plots. So the characters never really did anything unexpected. There was the odd plot surprise here and there, but no surprises for how the characters interacted with the plot. Everything feels determined because of that, like all the characters are just moving forward through the plot with the unconvincing artifice of agency. Before concluding, I'm going to mention a nice little piece of symbolism at the end of the film. When destroying the US military weapons satellite, the special robot child, Alfie, descends from the sky, sent down by her father, while he and her mother remain behind in the heavens, in this collapsing orbital fortress of empire. She's sent away like Kal-El from Krypton, Moses, etc. It falls in line with that mythological motif of a child with new and unique power being sent from the heavens to civilization to use their power to transform humanity for the better. This section of the film is also symbolic of Alfie's parents reuniting in heaven as they find each other again in the sky and then die together to perhaps make the symbolic literal. 
Based on a lot of the points I've made here, it may seem like I feel negatively towards this film, but I actually enjoyed it and would recommend watching it, if for no other reason than it's extremely technically impressive. It looks like a hugely expensive blockbuster, when the budget was relatively small. It's also nice to have an original IP like this, to make a change from what currently dominates cinema. Overall, while the creator squanders opportunities to sufficiently explore interesting questions and doesn't plunge to the depths it was well placed for on any front, it is a stylish, well-made, entertaining film. A middle-of-the-road bit of fun with a simplistic narrative but some really great style and flair. Anyway, what do you think? Have you watched The Creator? Do you like it? Do you agree or disagree with what I've said here? Let me know in the comments below, leave a like if you enjoyed, and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching, see you next time.